as the title of the webinar indicates, we're solely focusing on uh, the uh, EndNote plugin for Apple Pages today. Uh, we've got uh, plugins for you know other word processors like Microsoft Word, but I think it was about you know, going on 12 or more years ago uh, or so. Apple approached us to, uh, about adding uh, you know EndNote functionality in Apple Pages, and we were really honored to get that recognition. Uh, otherwise, you know Apple doesn't have a a plugin um, framework for Pages. So uh, the a plugin, the EndNote plugin for uh, Apple Pages, was developed by Apple's uh, developers. And today we're going to be looking at how you can, you know, use those tools to insert in-text citations directly within the body of uh, a Pages document. I'll show you how you can uh, change your output style to make sure that your uh, uh, formatted in-text citations and reference lists comport with whatever formatting guidelines your journal or uh, research project requires. I'll, uh, walk you through the process of customizing individual in-text citations. Uh, primarily useful uh, when you're using an author date citation format. There might be instances where you're required to perhaps uh, exclude an author in a particular citation. If you've mentioned that person's name in the preceding sentence, you might have to exclude the year. Uh, perhaps you want to add cited page information to let your reader know precisely where in that source work they would find this uh, information that you're referencing in your research project. So I'll show you how you can, on a case-by-case -case basis or a citation-by-citation -citation basis, apply customizations uh, to your in-text citations. I'll then show you how you can uh, create formatted footnote references. Apple Pages itself controls the insertion and the formatting of footnote references, but once you've created a footnote in Apple Pages, you can use the EndNote plugin to cite a reference within that uh, footnote area of the page, and EndNote will format that footnote reference, and if your style is set to do so, also create an accompanying bibliography uh, for those footnote references. And then finally, we'll look at how you can uh, reposition your bibliography if need be. Uh, by default, Apple Pages will put your bibliography at the very end of the document on a separate page. If you need that to exist elsewhere in the text, perhaps you've got an appendix that needs to be at the very end of the document. After your final formatting, you can cut and paste your bibliography elsewhere. And then once you've done that, you can do other uh, things that make other customizations, such as change your line spacing, change the font if you'd like, or perhaps change the bibliography title. With that said, I think we're ready to dive in here, so I'll go ahead and close out of our agenda slides. Now, I've already got uh, EndNote 20 up and running, and you know today we're really just due to the uh, restricted uh, uh, time slot. We're not going to be covering you know how to build a library, how to add references to the library. We have an essentials lesson plan that covers those workflows. So if you're just getting started with EndNote from scratch, I would recommend uh, checking the EndNote training portal because all of our training materials are available through the training portal. And again, you'll find an EndNote 20 Essentials lesson plan that will give you the basics of the application. But you can see here that I've got my EndNote uh, 20 up and running. I've got an EndNote library open. I've got it, it's not technically full screen, but I've got it sized to you know, uh, take advantage of my screen real estate here. And uh, you know, once you've got a library open in the EndNote, uh, application, you would be ready to start citing references in an Apple Pages uh, document. Now, I did want to mention uh, the tools for Apple Pages will most likely load for you automatically. It really does depend on the order in which you're installing your software. For instance, if you've installed uh, Pages before you installed EndNote, you might not see the EndNote plugin automatically. That's usually the scenario where you might need to do some manual uh, installation steps. So I did just want to point out quickly in Mozilla Firefox, there's a knowledge article on Apple's website that goes over some of the uh, installation tips. Uh, there's a set of um, a, a plugin installer uh, for various versions of Apple Pages. So you can see here in the knowledge article, if you're using EndNote X 9.3 or later, you'll want to make sure that you're using Apple Pages uh, 6.2 or later. 
And there's also a note that indicates, uh, you know, if you're running Mac OS Catalina or the new Mac OS Big Sur, that you do have to be um, running EndNote X 9.3 at the least to have that to function correctly. Now, if you are using EndNote X 9.2 or earlier on an older operating system, and perhaps you have a previous version of Apple Pages, Apple still links to the older plugin installers on this knowledge article. So I did want to point that out. You'll be able to you know, access these resources by searching Apple's website. Uh, for anyone who might be a little bit more tech savvy, I did just want to point out quickly uh, uh, by bringing up a finder window here that we've got uh, essentially a, a particular folder on your hard drive uh, where a bundle file needs to be found for uh, the EndNote commands to appear in Apple Pages. So you can see here at the bottom of this uh, finder window on the path bar under Macintosh HD, there's a library folder. With inside of that, there's an application support folder, followed by a research soft folder, an EndNote folder, and then finally a plugins folder. And you can see here that we've got a bundle file. And that's basically what tells Apple Pages to load the EndNote functionality when you create a, uh, an Apple Pages document. So if you have any trouble getting these commands to load, please feel free to reach out to EndNote product support. Uh, any member of our product support team would be happy to help investigate and confirm you've got a compatible version of Apple Pages. And then if so, look into getting that uh, bundle file in position so that the commands load correctly. But again, I've got a, a library open in my EndNote application. I'm ready to start citing in Apple Pages if I'd like. I've got, I've got two examples documents open already. Uh, we've got a document uh, related to uh, the, in, the creation of in-text citations, and then I'll be using another document uh, for footnote, our footnote example here. So I'm just talking over to our example document for uh, in-text citations. You can see I've just got some lorem ipsum placeholder text in this document to represent, you know, the body of text if someone was developing a research project. Before we, you know, cite any references, We'll want to make sure that my cursor or that your cursor is in position where you would want to create a new in-text citation. So, you know, really doesn't matter, uh, you know, where that is in the body of text. Let's pretend just for, uh, you know, ease of access that right at the end of this first paragraph, I would need to add an in-text citation. You can see I've just positioned my cursor at the end of this first paragraph here, and now I'm ready to uh, add uh, uh, you know, an in-text citation, a reference from my EndNote library. With my cursor in position, I can go to the Insert drop-down menu in Apple Pages. You can see that I've got the bundle file loading correctly. So toward the bottom of the Insert menu, we see a menu item called EndNote Citation. I did want to point out there is a keyboard shortcut as well for this command. So if you take note of that shortcut, that can save you, you know, a couple of clicks instead of having to go to the menu to select uh, EndNote Citation, that keyboard shortcut will just bring that uh, this window to the front of your screen. Since I'm already on the menu, I'm just going to go ahead and click on the command here. All right, and so we see that this window has come up. It has preloaded my, my last search term. Uh, the first time that you access this window, it may be blank initially, but all you would need to do if it is blank uh, to uh, query any of your active EndNote libraries is to input a search term right the, uh, into the search field here. I'm just going to repopulate the uh, last search that was present. Now that I've got my search term uh, entered, I can press return on my keyboard, and that's going to initiate my search. Uh, again, this plugin is going to look at any of my open libraries to find matching references. The search field is sort of a global search. You know, you can query an author surname. Uh, this window is not going to limit the search just to the author field. It would, if, if that person's name was found in a different field than your EndNote library records, uh, you know, those entries would uh, be brought up as well. Same goes for keywords or years, things like that. Uh, but we can see here that right on the uh, search results list, I have uh, the author, title, and year specified. And in most cases, this is probably enough information to confirm whether or not the reference you've selected is the entry that you would like to insert. Uh, if you needed a little bit of additional uh, context, uh, some additional details for that reference, we do see sort of an example summary or uh, an example formatted reference right below the list of search results here. So again, it has a little bit more uh, uh, metadata than you would find just on the search results list here. Whenever you're ready, you could you know, double click on the entry right on the search results list. Alternately, with the citation highlighted on the search results list, you could press the insert button here. 
Right where my cursor's flashing, we see an in-text citation has been created. I currently have a numbered style selected. We are going to change that in just a moment, but that's where you're seeing the citation number one. If I scroll down quickly, I just want to show you that at the very end of the document, on a separate page is the beginning of the bibliography that uh, will be developed for you automatically as you cite references with this uh, plugin. And like I mentioned, at the very end of our uh, lesson plan, I will show you how you can move this elsewhere. Uh, this is dynamically linked to bookmarks related to your, uh, your uh, in-text citations or sort of underlying code uh, linked to these uh, reference elements in your document. If you were to cut and paste this bibliography or uh, make changes to it uh, before your final formatting, you would see that uh, those actions cause the link to become broken. At that point, this would just become plain text and Apple Pages would create another bibliography that had those dynamic links. So again, that's why I recommend after the final formatting of your document, that's when you would actually apply any sort of uh, uh, bibliography customizations that you might have in mind. So I did want to point that out. So I'd like to go ahead and uh, insert another uh, citation, but before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and change our uh, output style just so that I can show you how you can quickly from one style to another on, a, uh, on the fly essentially uh, apply a different set of formatting guidelines to your document. So where you would go to the insert drop-down menu to add an in-text citation, it's the edit drop-down menu where you would choose the style, the EndNote output style that you would apply to your references. You can see here on the edit drop-down menu at near the very bottom, we've got EndNote citations. And I've got all of my favorited output styles listed here. Those are styles that have been marked as favorites in the EndNote 20 application. If I want to choose another style, let's say maybe APA 7, I can just click on its name here. And we see instantly uh, the citation has updated here on my first page. And if I scroll down to the end of the document, the bibliography is updated as well. So it's really a, a, a dynamic link, you know, between your in-text citations and the uh, bibliography uh, related to whatever style you've got selected that these changes will appear on the fly. Now, like I mentioned, when you go to the edit drop-down menu and you point your mouse over EndNote citations, uh, these are your favorited styles. You've got much more uh, uh, styles available in the EndNote application. So if there's a particular style that you wanted to apply to your pages document that wasn't already marked as a favorite, you can go back to the EndNote 20 application. I'm just going to click on the EndNote icon here on my dock. From EndNote 20, I can go to my tools menu. That's where I have the menu item for output styles. From here, I would want to choose open style manager. This window is showing me all of the styles available in my EndNote installation. There are about 500 output styles that are inclu uh, included by default uh, with EndNote when you install the EndNote application. You can customize your installation to include additional output styles. We also have on our website at endnote.com forward slash downloads, we've got our content file repositories. So if you were looking for additional output styles, maybe uh, something that's not part of this default list, our uh, online uh, style repository currently contains about 7,200 output styles, I believe. So feel free to check again if there's a particular set of formatting guidelines you need, you need to apply to your research project. Check the style repository at endnote.com. There's a good chance we've got a pre-existing style for you that you can download and add to your EndNote installation. In the event that uh, we didn't have a predefined style uh, for the guidelines that you need to apply to your research project, as long as you know how you want your references to appear, you can reach out to EndNote product support and we'd be happy to help uh, customize one of the existing styles further to match the formatting guidelines that you need to apply to your uh, research project. But we can see here, this is the list of all of my available styles. Any style that has a check next to it is marked as a favorite so that you can select it from a short list of output styles. So let's just say as an example here, maybe I want to, uh, uh, perhaps uh, in a research project, apply, you know, BMJ's formatting guidelines to my writing uh, project. I can just put a check next to it on the style manager here. When I'm finished, I can close the style manager. I would want to make sure I leave my EndNote library open, as I've done, and I'll return to Apple Pages. Back in Pages, if I go to the Edit drop-down menu once more, and then point my mouse over EndNote citations. Perfect, we see the new style is part of the list here. And if I wanted to, I could select it right now, 
but I'm going to go ahead and leave the APA 7 style selected for our next uh, 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 learning objectives. So that's how you would change output styles. Again, you would do so uh, from the edit drop down by pointing your mouse over in note citations. And if you want to change what styles are available in Apple Pages, you would just reconfigure the styles that have been marked as favorites on the style manager in your EndNote 20 application. So let's go ahead and let's uh, create another uh, in-text citation. I'm going to go ahead and reposition my cursor. Uh, I can go, you know, in the middle of a, a uh, paragraph if need be, but uh, I think just to make things very clear, I'm going to go ahead and cite at the end of the second uh, paragraph as if this was another instance where I wanted to create another in-text citation. So with my cursor flashing in position, I'll go ahead and go back to the insert drop-down menu once more to choose EndNote citation. I've got my search uh, interface here. I can go ahead and select one of the items from my pre-existing uh, um, search results that have already been uh, populated. If I wanted to, I could uh, input another term or phrase from my EndNote library. And if I press return, any of those matching references would be found. And let's say I want to you know, add another uh, citation. I'll just choose one at random. I've highlighted a particular entry here on the, the list of search results. Maybe in this instance, this might be one of the examples, like I was mentioning, where I need to uh, remove uh, the author's name, perhaps. I'm using an, an author date formatted style, but let's say in this scenario, I've mentioned the author's surname in the preceding sentence, and perhaps for these formatting guidelines, that would call for the exclusion of the name in the citation so that it's not repeated. In this instance, if I know that that's the format of, uh, that I'm going to want, ultimately, before I even insert that citation, I can customize it. I can right here on the uh, Find EndNote Citations window, I can check uh, Exclude Author, uh, excuse me, uh, under next to Exclude, I can uh, checkbox the uh, author name option. I can do the same thing for year as well, if I'd prefer to exclude the year. If I wanted to suppress the uh, citation altogether, uh, perhaps I you know, had a um, uh, someone's uh, research um, article that I had uh, you know, um, uh, reviewed through my uh, preparation process, but perhaps I'm not citing specific information that's found directly in that uh, article, I, I, but I still want to let my reader know that I've consulted that work. That might be an instance where I wouldn't have a direct citation for that particular research article, but it might be something that I still want to include in my formatted reference list. I would be able to achieve that by, you know, checking uh, the uh, only insert into bibliography option. I'm going to leave that deselected right now. A couple of additional options here we're going to look at in just a moment, but for this particular citation, I'm going to go ahead and just exclude the author name, and if I press insert, Perfect. Right where my citations, uh, my citation was flashing, we see the new in-text citation. It's uh, formatted according to the customization guidelines I specified, no author information. But if we go look at the bibliography, we'll see that the uh, bibliography is updated dynamically and we now have both citations in this updated reference list. So it's a really straightforward process. You know, you're just positioning your cursor where you want to add an in-text citation. You would, um, you know, access the EndNote command here, the EndNote citation command on the insert drop-down menu. Find and select the reference you want to insert, and once you insert it, it should appear automatically in format. I want to make a group citation, I'll, or show you how to make a group citation. That would be where you, an instance in a particular citation where you've got more than one reference uh, listed. So let's say as an example, maybe this first, uh, this first uh, in-text citation from Mickelson uh, 2017, let's say I actually want to turn this into a grouped citation. I would do so by positioning my cursor right after the very end of that existing in-text citation so that you uh, currently you can see that my cursor is flashing immediately after the closing parens uh, character. There's no space or anything. It's immediately after that first citation. If I go back to the insert drop-down menu, I can uh, uh, select that EndNote citation once more. Just uh, due to time constraints, I'll just randomly select one of the citations here. So maybe we'll choose this one. Uh, this might be an instance where I want to not only make a group citation, but I want 
want to add a, a prefix. Uh, this would just be pl a plain text that would appear at the beginning of that particular in-text citation. Maybe I'll add the phrase see also for my reader to let them know that this might be a companion um, reference perhaps, uh, just as an example of prefix text. So now that I've got my uh, citation selected and I've got my prefix defined, I can press insert. Okay, perfect. So we see that this is now turned into a grouped citation. Both of these references are in the same set of uh, uh, parentheses, the same uh, parentheses, but we see that each of the two citations are separated by a semicolon for this particular output style. And we see that, uh, you know, they're ordered uh, alphabetically according to this style's guidelines. And we see that the, we've got the, um, uh, the uh, prefix that I had defined for this particular style, uh, this particular reference uh, in the uh, EndNote um, uh, citation in the text. So that's a quick way. Maybe we'll just, just as an example, add one more citation here. I've got my cursor in position. Go to the insert drop down menu once more, EndNote citation. And again, we'll just add uh, one more just uh, uh, to reinforce this workflow. So maybe this time I'll go ahead and just double click the entry right here on the search results page. Perfect. So we've got all three now. We've got the uh, all three citations in this group citation, uh, and I can customize uh, the appearance of each one of the citations uh, in the uh, uh, document here. Now, I did want to point out uh, there is another method of citation customization that you can apply after the fact once the citation appears in the in the document. Let's create one more standalone citation here. I'm going to just going to scroll down a little bit in the uh, text. I'm going back to the insert drop down, choosing EndNote citation once more. Let's maybe uh, uh, search for another topic in my active EndNote library, the term bats. We'll go ahead and just select one of these references here. And if I press insert, we see we've got the fully formatted citation according to the APA 7th guidelines, uh, which is the, uh, the author name and uh, year uh, in parentheses. Uh, let's say, you know, I've inserted it as such and then come to find out I, I am going to want to add cited page information to this particular citation, but I didn't do so up front. I can still make that change. I would just need to double click on this particular formatted citation. We see that Apple Pages provides a, a pop-up window with some of the same uh, customization options. So you can see if I wanted to here, I can add a prefix like that uh, phrase see also in my last example. Suffix is really the same concept as prefix. It would just be text trailing the parenthetical citation. Range is intended for cited page information. Not every style requires this and not every EndNote output style is set up to use this field. Your output style has to be defined to include cited pages for this range field to even become activated. Uh, I can tell you that any of the variants of the APA styles are set up for cited pages. I'm currently formatting this document with the APA 7th style. So if I wanted to let my reader know that perhaps whatever uh, knowledge I'm referencing in my research project that's attributable to someone else's work, I want to let my reader know precisely where in that previously published research they would be able to find this information. I can type a page number or if it spans uh, a range of pages, I can type in a range of pages here. Whenever I'm ready, I can just press return on my keyboard and we see that change take effect. So again, the uh, APA styles are set up for cited pages. And so what we got was the, um, uh, the uh, page prefix that's defined in the style itself. And when you've got a range of pages, instead of just a P period prefix, it's a PP period uh, as the uh, pages prefix. So that's uh, again, uh, and uh, applies, um, uh, the other customization options apply here as well. So if I wanted to, after citing a reference, exclude the author, I can do so from the pop-up here. If I wanted to exclude a, a, a year, I would be able to do that. Same for um, uh, a prefix. All of these options here are, uh, are um, uh, you know, uh, at play uh, for a, uh, uh, customizing a, cit a citation after it's been inserted into your text. So you've got some flexibility there. Now I did, before we move on to formatted uh, footnote references, I did want to show you how you can remove an unwanted citation from your uh, text. So let's say perhaps uh, this um, particular citation that I've customized already, I want to remove for whatever reason. Uh, this might actually be a good time to mention that, you know, if let's say you've cited a reference 
and perhaps you noted a typo after the reference was cited or you had to change some bit of information about the reference, to get those changes from your EndNote library to appear in your pages document, you will need to remove any of the existing citations for that reference and reinsert them so that Apple Pages can see the change that you've made to your library. So let's say perhaps for this, uh, I think this was the Laudato uh, reference from 2010, yes. Let's say maybe, uh, you know, I noticed a typo in the author's name and I wanted to take it out. I could uh, simply, uh, you know, um, uh, delete what I see in the document and that would usually remove the reference from the bibliography as well, as long as that's the only time the reference is cited. But I did just want to point out that you do have an option here on the, um, uh, oh, actually I'm not seeing it here on the insert menu. There is an option to uh, uh, remove, delete a citation as well uh, that's part of the tools. Uh, and I'll, I'll go over that in just a moment when we uh, cite a footnote reference. But I did just want to point out there's a couple of ways that you can remove uh, an in-text citation once it's been added to your document. I'm going to go ahead and switch gears here. I'm going to close out of this example document that we've been using for uh, in-text citations just to keep things uh, streamlined and, and clear. I've got another real basic pages document open here that we'll use for our example for uh, footnote references. And, you know, the process for creating a footnote reference is, is pretty similar to creating an in-text citation, except that you first have to create the footnote using Apple Pages. So for me to do that, let's pretend, uh, you know, at the uh, end of this uh, paragraph here, let's just use uh, as an example, I want to add, a, you know, a footnote reference at the bottom of this page. I would just want to position my cursor where that uh, footnote uh, entry should be added to the page itself. Whenever I'm ready, I can go to the insert drop down menu here at the top of my document. About halfway down, we see an option for footnote. I'll select that. Perfect. So we see that, you know, at the bottom, uh, rather in the body of this text, we see the little footnote number. And I did just want to point out, again, uh, EndNote doesn't control the numbering, uh, the appearance of the footnotes themselves. If you wanted to change your uh, footnote number, excuse me, your footnote numbering on the format uh, tab here on the right side of the document window, you do see that you've got some options. You can, you know, change the uh, format. There's a couple of options here for the the numbering of your footnote references. You can change how the uh, the numbers are assigned. Uh, you know, if you've got, if you want your uh, footnote uh, numbering to restart on every page or at the start of each section, you've got those options here. And I did just want to point out, you know, you've got uh, the option instead of footnotes, you can also use what are called endnotes. Different than the endnote software, an endnote is essentially a footnote that would usually appear at the, the bottom of your document. So there would be almost like a secondary bibliography of EndNote references that would appear at the end of a document requiring EndNotes. You do see there is an option for section EndNotes as well if you've got various chapters or various sections. If you want, um, you know, um, section EndNote lists, you can achieve that here with uh, Apple Pages as well. So I did want to point that out. Well, I'm going to leave this set to footnotes. And just to um, um, uh, mention once more, it's at the bottom of the page where you'll find the actual footnote uh, area where you would be able to add a reference from your EndNote library. So I've got my cursor flashing in the footnote area of uh, this particular page. If I now go to the insert drop down menu once more, I can go to EndNote citation again. Maybe this time let's search for a, a year instead. I'm just um, sort of um, showing you the fact that, again, there are really any piece of information that would be found in any of your active EndNote libraries you can query for uh, through this window and find all matching references. So let's just say as an example here, maybe it's this reference from a uh, first author with the surname Basie that I want to cite in this uh, particular uh, footnote uh, reference. I would select it as I would normally do, and if I press insert, all right, so we see that we've got a, you know, a fully formatted reference in the footnote area. Now, I need to double check because I might not be using a footnote style, and this may just be the appearance of uh, how the reference would look in the bibliography if I've selected a non-footnote style. So just like we did in the other pages document, if I want to change my style, I'll go to the Edit drop-down menu. I'll point my mouse over EndNote Citations. We've got several pre-existing footnote styles for the, the, I'd say the major footnote guidelines or formatting requirements. 
but really any output style can be set up for footnotes if you'd like to customize your own style. Let's go ahead and let's choose the uh, Turabian uh, ninth footnote style just as our example here. So I'll select that just by clicking on it. And perfect, so if we look at the uh, footnote again, it's still a, you know, a fully formatted reference, fully fleshed out reference, a, li a little bit uh, truncated uh, compared to what we were seeing just a moment ago. But this is a, a, a true uh, footnote style. And I would say in most instances for footnote uh, output styles, uh, footnote formatting guidelines, you'll have you know, a, 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 a sort of a brief reference in the footnote area and then a, a more uh, fleshed out reference in your bibliography for that uh, particular uh, item that you've cited in your document. So let's add one more uh, you know, footnote to this uh, document here, just as an example. I'm gonna go ahead and reposition my cursor and let's actually uh, position our cursor a little bit higher in the, uh, on the page which should uh, clue pages into the fact that it should renumber the footnotes on this page since I've added another element to the page. So I've got my cursor flashing right after this first sentence here. If I go to the insert drop down menu, I'll choose footnotes, like I mentioned. All right, so now we see that this new entry is considered footnote number one, because again, Apple Pages has sort of taken stock of the page and uh, you know uh, recognizes the fact that there's an, a new entry in front of what had been footnote number one. That has updated as well in the footnote area uh, of the um, uh, uh, page, at the bottom of the page, with my cursor flashing in that area. I can go to the insert drop down. And then from here, I can choose uh, in note citation. And again, we're just uh, due to time constraints going to select another uh, random entry from this list of references. Now I did want to point out, like I was mentioning, if you want to add cited page information, uh, your style has to be set up for it. And you would input that information here into the range field when you're customizing a citation. Uh, but if you want to just, uh, regardless of the style that you're selecting, if you want a workflow that's going to work um, um, regardless of the style that you choose, instead of setting up your style to include cited pages and inputting the page information to the range field, you can use suffix instead. But the difference is that you would need to put in your own uh, prefix. So where if your style is set up to use cited pages, the page prefix is usually predefined. If you want to use this sort of brute force solution by selecting or inputting text into the suffix field, the only difference you need to sort of take note of is that you want to uh, uh, define the page prefix yourself. So I've just put in space P period space 27. If I go ahead and press insert, all right, not only have I created a new footnote reference, that's what we're, our ultimate goal of uh, visiting that window, but I've also added cited page information. So that workflow of using suffix to define page information, that's something you can do in a footnote or an in-text citation if you'd like to do that. Whenever you're ready, like I mentioned, after your final formatting of your document, uh, you can apply further edits to your bibliography. Of course, I would uh, recommend saving a backup of your document just in case. So if you've made any recent changes uh, in the document, I would recommend performing a regular save on that uh, particular document to uh, ensure that that file is all up to date. At that point, once you've updated your primary document, you might come to file and, and duplicate the, the pages document so that you've got a second version of the document where you can reposition your bibliography. So let's say, just as an example here, of course, like I mentioned, the, the bibliography that Pages generates is on a separate page at the end of the document initially. But whenever I'm ready, I can apply uh, further changes to it, like I mentioned. So let's say maybe I don't want my bibliography title to be bibliography. Maybe I want it to be references. I can just type that in here. And maybe I don't want it to be left, al left aligned. Maybe I want it to be centered. That's probably a little bit more common. I can go ahead and do that. Maybe I want a, uh, a hard return, you know, after the, the uh, title, just to increase the readability before the first reference. I just press return on my keyboard to add that. If I want to, I can uh, customize the, uh, line, the line spacing, like I mentioned. You would want to, you know, uh, select the uh, bibliography itself. Uh, you know, on the page, and then here on the uh, format uh, tab, you've got options related to Apple Pages to change things like line spacing and things like that. I could change the font, um, you know, I've got all of the typical uh, uh, customization options there. So I've just added uh, double spacing to the bibliography, and ultimately if I need to, this to uh, exist elsewhere in my text, 
uh, before my uh, final submission. I can select the bibliography, including the bibliography title with my mouse. I can go to the edit drop down and choose cut, or I can use the keyboard shortcut command X to achieve the same. I'll go ahead and use the menu item today. And let's say maybe it's just, since we've got a real basic document here, let's say that I just need the bibliography to be somewhere on the first page here. I've got my cursor in position and I can now go to the edit drop down and choose paste. But I did just want to point out again that uh, once you've done this uh, this repositioning of the bibliography, it's it's almost as if it's plain text now. That underlying bookmark code that linked uh, the references to the uh, uh, items uh, to the um, uh, the uh, endnote functionality is now broken. The citations. Uh, uh, essentially uh, still have, um, or these are footnotes, but the, uh, you know, the actual footnotes still have code related to it, but the bibliography itself doesn't. And I, I recommend doing this after the final formatting of your document, because if you, if let's say you add another reference after uh, you've uh, moved your bibliography, I just want to point out what will happen here is uh, not a, a terrible uh, problem. I've just created an in-text citation, but I did just want to show you we've got uh, another bibliography has been created, in which case, yeah, you can, you know, apply the same customization options again once more, but you could avoid that altogether if you just wait till the very last formatting of your pages document before you reposition your bibliography or apply any uh, other uh, formatting customization, such as line spacing or font, things like that.